Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. We're gonna build our first soundboard. What's a soundboard? This is a soundboard. It's a bunch of buttons you can click. Yeah! We're gonna cover using Howler, it's an audio library, to add some sounds to our interactivity that we've created inside of Pixie. And we are going to learn about containers and how they allow you to group, basically display objects. Anything that you see on the screen is a display object from a sprite, the interactive buttons we made yesterday to do simple animations. So let's dive in. I've taken the liberty of already creating all the sounds for you in both MP3 and AUG format, as well as the images. However, we still need the Howler library to do sounds and audio effects. So I have installed it here, but you can do it yourself via npm install Howler. Save, and it'll save to your package JSON. We've got three lines of code. We've created our log, so we can type log instead of console log. We've got our Pixie application. We've added to the view. Let's go ahead and create the most painful function, and that is the make button, or in this case, make image button. We've shown you how to create buttons before, but this button needs an image texture. It needs audio files, both MP3 and AUG, for the actual Howler library to play it. Some other parameters to how it displays. Give it an image, an audio MP3, an audio AUG. Now we'll default the X and Y to tr zero. That's where you want it on the screen. What this make image button function will do is first to create a button like we've always done before. You might not have noticed it before, but notice that Pixie Sprite is not new. It actually uses a factory function to create from image. A lot of things in Pixie are new. You're actually creating new instances, but this particular one gives you a button via a factory function, so there's no new here to do that. It's confusing. You'll just end up memorizing it or abstracting it. So for Howler, you create a new how, and you just configure the type of audio file you want. In our case, we have a source file. And we're gonna give it an array of two of them. First, the audio MP3 for browsers that support MP3, and audio AUG for browsers that only support AUG. We'll then say interactive, because it's a button we wanna click on it. We don't have to worry about button mode for now. Interactive is good enough. And we'll do our pointer down like before. So when you click down on it, it actually happens. And we'll get our event function for the callback. We're not going to use it though, but we're just going to do sound that play. So this sound, once these files are loaded, you just call play as many times as you want, and it'll play that sound for you. Up here, we've got a stage on our app. So we'll say app stage add child. We'll add the button to it. And then we'll go ahead and set the buttons X and Y to whatever you passed in. If you pass nothing in, it'll default to zero. And we'll return the button in case somebody wants to utilize it. So we'll run npm start and see what our screen shows us. And currently it's a black screen of nothing. That's okay, because we haven't drawn anything. We've created a button function, but not actually have done anything. We know Pixie's legit because she's here. So let's add our first button here. We'll go make image button, and we'll pass it the three parameters. So the first is the images of Chicha Chang Chang. Every, every good day starts with the Jamaican. Sounds, mp3, chicha chang chang. And we'll do the exact same thing for the aug. OGG, get rid of the trailing comma here. We're not gonna specify an X and Y, we're just gonna let it default to zero. Bit save, it'll reload a browser down here. We'll go back and we'll see, hey, what do you know? Chicha chang chang. And every time you click, he says chicha chang chang. Chicha chang chang. Chicha chang, chang. So that is your first button, and the rest are created in much the same way. Let's copy and paste our second one. Get rid of the trailing comma there. Put Hercules when he says disappointed. But notice that, sadly, I'm gonna scroll my browser down here, that it's covering up our other one. That's because it's X and Y defaults to zero. So we're gonna change its X to 320 because it's about the size of the image. So now it's at 320, much better. If we click it, but actually, we're not disappointed because it works fantastic. But here's an issue. We're already having a horizontal scroll bar. Part of the issue is we could start scaling these images down. We could go into an image editing program. If you want to scale down a particular button, we'll take this button that we get back. You can call the scale option on it and either set the X and Y to a percentage or you can say set and pass in a percentage. I'm going to pass in 50%. So it's going to scale at 50% down. So that's much better, but if we add additional images, we're gonna have to keep scaling them as well. So let's fix that by creating our first container here. Go back to the very top. We'll create a buttons holder. So this holder will actually contain all of those images, in our case, button images. And we'll scale this guy down 50%. People always forget this, 
in Pixie, you forget to add your actual button holder. So you can put the buttons in it, but if it's not added to the stage, you won't see it. So we'll add that, and then we'll change our app stage here to buttons holder. So now we're gonna add all of our buttons. Every time we call make image, button's gonna add there. We've only created two right now, and they're all gonna be in the buttons holder. Now that we've scaled the container down, we've scaled the entire thing. So he's still twice the size. Good friend, Mr. Kamosi here. Disappointed! So let's copy paste Peppy here. And we added him, he's on top. So now we're gonna have to increase his Y because he's way too high. So we'll say zero for his X. And let's do 370 for the Y. It's about how big the image is. Okay, he's down there. He's got some black borders on his side. So we're actually gonna rip those off by using a negative X. So you don't always have to be positive. You can do negative X's as well, make a move even farther left off screen. So now he's aligned a little bit better there. Come on, roll. All right. So add the rest with some minor tweaks. We got Cable Guy. Get her done. We got Ash. Groovy. But it's not quite that easy to catch. The King of Thieves. He's got to have two Bruce Campbells, of course. What? Yeah! <laughs> and two Little Johns. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create a soundboard. You can create many different buttons, link them to play sounds from Howler, which is a library that loads MP3 and AUG files to play them. It does a lot more of things. We're just using the simple functionality. And you can scale both images and buttons that you load in, as well as putting everything inside of a container and just simply scaling that for the button. But you can also scale individual containers as well.